I am Jeffrey Robinson, a graduate student at the University of West Florida and an intern at FPAN's Northwest office. Okay, come on, there we go. Okay, all right. So the reason we're all here, um, we all know that the seas are rising. This was recently in the news again, as the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change just released their contribution to the um, sixth assessment report. And in it, um, I said that based upon current measurements, the seas are rising at a rate of 3.7 millimeters, millimeters of year. This is more than double the rate of the um, sea level rise a century ago. So this represents quite a dire problem for archeologists. Um, so what can we do about that? Well, the, um, is the current, at the current rate, there are over 13,000 um, archeological sites in the Southeast and alone that are over, that will be at risk as they are currently zero to one meters um, above means a uh, mean sea level. So as we've been talking about all day, one thing we can do is document. And as um, been discussed in several presentations before me, the ways we've been doing that so far has been with um, terrestrial laser scanning and photogrammetry. Their um, terrestrial laser scanning for um, those who aren't familiar, as similar to LIDAR in which a um, laser rangefinder sends out a pulse to continually scan the area. And upon bouncing back, an onboard computer calculates intent, um, distance and intensity values, which allows it to create a 3D model of the environment. Photogrammetry is the use of um, a camera to take many photos of the surrounding area in which a specialized um, program then um, then creates a 3D image of the um, of the photos. Now, aside from the documentary and you know outreach potential of these, one use I'm investigating is to calculate erosion. I'm doing this using a um, method called multi-scale mild model cloud comparison or M3C2. M3C2 is a plugin for the open source program Cloud Compare, which is used to make measurements in point clouds. Now, um, using the MC32 method, you can compare any two point clouds and figure out what's different. Now, the way that I'm using it is to take um, two, um, two scans of, um, of you know, the same area, separated in time, and to see what has changed, like thinking that without any, you know, intentional damage, the result will be the erosive change to the site. On the left, you can see an example of this process used at the Neolithic site of Chadohoyuk, with the um, red portions being what being what's what's changed now. Using that, so, um, you. Um, using this tool, I'm investigating three sites in Northwest Florida. Um, on the left is um, specifically Mound C of the larger Butcher Pen Mound Complex, a um, multi-component um, mound site that had been inhabited multiple times through the archaic, through the um, from the archaic to the um, late Mississippian. On the top right is the um, is Battery Cooper, one of the many batteries at Fort Pickens, with um, built in 1905 and used um, in World War One and World War Two, and on bottom right is Mill is Middle Minnens, um, uh, between um, located on Santa Rosa Island between two dunes. Um, this site was very important as it's been. Um, buried and then uncovered multiple times by the, um, the wind and the tides. So I was using this to investigate an extremely dynamic site. All right. So what, every, what I know everyone is really here for is to check out some of the models that we've been 
using to investigate this. I'm midway through my period of investigating the sites multiple times to measure erosive change. And let's see if I can, um, I'm about to stop the share and then reshare. Okay. Here I'm gonna be showing two models that have been um, used in various stages of reconstruction. Uh, share. This one right here is um, middle minnens. And this is what is known as a um, wireframe model. And then this, I think this came out very well, as you can see, even all of our footprints as we were setting up throughout the site. Um, this can capture quite a lot of um, the methods of combining photogrammetry and terrestrial laser scanning can um, you be used to capture quite a lot of detail as you, um, on this dune right here, you can even see of the way that the wind was currently blowing quite. All right, and our, uh, let me see here again. Oh, here it's, okay. Share screen, all right, share, all right. This right here is um, Mound C on Butcher Pin Mounds. This mound used to have um, a very distinct double manned minion structure that was, you know, very apparent to any passersby. And what was also apparent was supposedly whole pots were once washing out onto the beach. But as you can see now, that double banded midden is, you know, pretty much gone. But this is what a um, full model is able to be look, looks like. And using this method of combining telestial laser scanning and photogrammetry, I was able to capture almost all of the detail almost all the detail of the site at, you know, a fairly high resolution. Now, um, right, you know, almost right after this conference, we'll be going back, um, going back again and doing all the same, you know, scanning and taking photos. And that time will allow me to hopefully be able to compare to see like what has been changed as these, uh, as these two, the data used in these bottles was um, captured in the middle of June. All right, going back to the presentation. All right, uh, yeah. All right, come on. Yes. Now, despite what you may think, like um, all this process, you know, as attractive as it sounds, has not been without its challenges. As you can see here in this photo, this is myself and. Um, Mike Toman with Nicole Grenan behind the camera being stuck in the middle of a rainstorm. So um, one of the major challenges from this um, and using this method has been to, has been, you know, the amount of things that can, you know, possibly go wrong. Um, the pop-up rainstorm can happen. Um, one time the um, machine just decided, no, I, I don't like the SD card today, so it just decided to not work, despite the fact that it had been used this SD card on multiple occasions. Um, another drawback to these methods has been as well is that um, um, considerable amount of um, time and expense, you know, has to be gone into um, process um, processing these images, as well as a fair amount of technical skill. All right, well. Um, thank you all for coming, and that's my talk.